She knew there was no escape. Angie was upstairs fuming. He was going to come downstairs any minute now and get her. He had warned her not to run, not to try to escape. But how could she sit still and watch him do that to her? She wasn't an animal. She had said no to him and his expression had changed from the sweet man she met online to a grotesque beast in a matter of seconds. His eyes had turned into a bottomless tunnel when she had refused his wild fetish request. Now standing at the locked front door with her heart pounding against her chest, she regretted coming. Angie stood at the top of the staircase and smiled. The smile you smile when you trap a rat in a deep pocket and you enjoy seeing it scurrying around the bees and sides, knowing there's no escape, but it keeps trying regardless. Ivana was his rat, and he had trapped her in his dark house, with all the windows and doors tightly shut. He could do anything he desired with her. After all, he had paid heavily. Now, to decide what to poke her with, he picked up a metal crowbar and began his descent down the staircase. With each step he took, Ivana knew she was closer to her doom. Angie placed his feet on the last step and tightened his grip on the crowbar. Any second now, and he would bring her into submission. His pretty little rat. In a flash, he closed the distance between them and raised the metal. Her shrill cry pierced the air and totally destabilized him. He hadn't expected her to do that. The shock weakened his thrust, and so the metal came down clumsily on her shoulders. But even before it touched her, she fell into a soft pile at his feet. Stupid girl. Angie stood there, listening to see if her cry had attracted any attention from his neighbors especially that nosy Nora who was always poking her nose into matters that had nothing to do with her. He watched the soft pile at his feet. She wasn't moving, maybe just unconscious, but he had to finish her off. She had seen too much and knew too much. He would carry her to the bathtub and finish her off. But first, he had to get a fresh supply of body bags. Some vital pads had to be packaged separately. He got out of his door and quickly scanned the area. Nothing. He went to a store nearby, got the bags, and returned and scanned again. Still nothing. Good. It was a good day for that busybody to be out. Satisfied, he took a few steps and slotted the key in the keyhole. Her voice was like an iron chair grating on cement. He frowned and clenched his hairy fist. He called out from behind her clothesline. Angie knew those clothes she was hanging out were completely dry. He could bet Nora had only come out with dry clothes to spread because she wanted to be nosy. He waited for her to come close. She probably just wanted to be noticed. He would give her a nice compliment and she'd be on her way and allow him attend to his unfinished business. Nora came close and asked Angie if he liked the weather. He rolled his eyes and said yes, he loved the sunny weather and told her it was the best weather to dry clothes with and he nodded at her already dry clothes on the line. She knew he had caught on to her tricks but she just giggled. The next question she asked threw him off balance. Oh, Angie, it seems you have company. I wonder to... Angie frowned and quizzed her. Who told you I have company? 
You know I like being on my own. Angie had to pay more attention to this tweet. She may have heard when Ivana screamed. While Nora kept Angie busy with useless talk, inside, Ivana, who had pretended to be knocked out, crept around the house looking for a way to escape. She had been lying close to the front door and had gotten up the moment Angie left. Right now, she was trying to fit herself into the small store window which opened up to the back of the house. Suddenly, the window creaked and the sound reverberated through the steel house. She knew it could give her away if he came in now, but it wasn't time to stop. She wasn't going to lose this opportunity. And indeed, even though Nora was still talking gibberish, Angie was trained to pick up sand dropping. He heard the creaking and froze. That couldn't be Ivana. He was sure he had knocked her out. Without an explanation, he turned his back on Nora and inserted his key. Angie stepped in and didn't meet Ivana lying on the floor where he had left her. He screwed his eyes and tried to contain the rage building inside his chest. Of course, he knew where the creaking sound had come from. That was the same window used for dropping his organ bags. It was the perfect spot to drop the bags for the picker. It was ironic that she had found the window, but sad too that she was going out through the window alive. She wasn't supposed to leave the window while still breathing. Angie moved swiftly to the store and sure, the window was hanging open. His prisoner had gone free. He wasn't scared. If there was one thing Ivana would not do, it was to call the police or expose him. He had too many indecent photos and videos of her which he could release to the internet anytime. Plus, she would not be able to give them enough evidence of what he had done to her. Still, he was sad to let her go. He couldn't think of looking for her around the area now as Nora was still out there and would suspect something. But if Nora spotted Ivana, he had the perfect tale to tell. And of course, Ivana wouldn't dare counter his story. He turned and went out through the front door. There was no one in sight. Then he strolled to the back of the house to pretend to check on a faulty pipe. The store window was his interest, and with one look he confirmed Ivana had escaped from the window. She had also left one visible evidence. One blue button from her shirt lay on the cement floor under the window and the red smudge on the windowsill from her wounded hand. As he walked back to the front door, four horrified eyes followed him. They were bent with fear and watching him from the house beside his. They were Ivana and Nora. <laughs>